Hmm, what a mistake. I feel like I'm talking very fast in this video. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today's video <laughs> is another collab. It's a collab with my good friend on YouTube here, Steph, and her YouTube name is It's Just Steph. So I will have her channel and her video linked below in my description box. So you should definitely check it out. But this video, the collab, <laughs> the topic of this video is makeup regrets. And so let me just talk a little bit about Steph first and then into why we chose this topic for our video. If you at all resonate or like my videos and you are sure to love Steph as well because she does a lot of unboxings and she is just a genuine true lover of makeup and you can really feel that through her videos. She's also a mom which I think is really amazing and not something that we share in common but something I admire. And most relevant and most importantly she loves makeup but if she doesn't love something she's not afraid to tell you and so I had this idea and I pitched this idea to her for our collab that we talk about makeup items that we regret buying or makeup items that weren't as good as we expected them to be and she was like yeah and i was like yeah that suits our channels and again i have her links down in my description and so be sure to visit her send her lots of love and tell her that you came from my channel or if you're from steph's channel let me know too for this video we're picking out 10 ish around 10 items that we're going to be sharing with y'all okay so i actually recently filmed a declutter video of my makeup collection with everything I'm throwing out or passing on or so on and so forth and so obviously that video had a ton of makeup regrets makeup that isn't as good as I expected it to be so for this video to make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit spicier I decided to choose items that are actually spoken very highly about in this YouTube community of ours so I selected items that I was surprised that I didn't like more, meaning that I went into using this item with very high expectations. And for one reason or another or several that I'm about to share with y'all, they made it to this list in this video. With that being said, because I'm touching on very adored items, some of the things I might say may be controversial and I feel like I shouldn't need to make this disclaimer, but I do. <laughs> These are just my opinions, y'all. It's just makeup. Everyone has different skin, different features, different makeup preferences. And so because of that, everyone's experience of using these items is going to be different, which means my experience might be different from another YouTuber that you adore and fully trust every word they say. And so if they said something that's different from what I'm saying, it just means that we experience the item differently and that's chill. That's totally cool. Also, if you bought these items with your own money, that's cool too. We all make our own decisions. It's your life, it's your money. So I'm not telling you that you made a bad decision. Yeah. Okay, now let's get into the items. I did use many of these items on my face today, actually, for this look. So I could kind of feel it for one last time before I talk about it on camera. So let me go kind of in the order of putting it on my face. For starters, I have four foundation products actually, and so the one I use today is this IT Cosmetics CC Matte CC Cream. And I have the matte formula and I also have the original formula that I fell in love with and then I got this and kind of fell away from that and then I started using the original again and realized that this is not as good as I thought it was. So today I'm wearing the shade Light and I like that it has SPF. It's a pretty high SPF especially for a cosmetic item. Granted I'm not going to just depend on this SPF alone but the reason why this ended up in this video is because the texture is just bad. I actually have this included in my 20 and 2020 project pan and when I was introducing the items for this project in my introduction video I said that I had this product for a little while and I used it a lot and then I stopped using it and I couldn't remember like why I stopped using it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember why I stopped using it now. So <laughs> I can make it work like I did today, but I have to blend it out with a uh, makeup sponge, a wet makeup sponge instead of a brush because a brush is just gonna be like too thick. But with a wet sponge, I can sheer it out a little bit. However, sometimes in the mornings, I just wanna like smear something on my face really fast and then like head out to work. And this is not an item that I can do that with. So in recent days, I've been much preferring the original CC cream because the texture of it is a lot more like, it's also thick, but it's much more easily spreadable. So that's item one. Item two is uh, one that a lot of people really like and one that I really hoped that I would have liked even though I knew that I maybe wouldn't. So weird introduction, but it's the ColourPop Pretty Filter Tinted Moisturizer and I have mine in the shade Light 6W. Oh, okay, so some of the things that lots of people that I have been absorbing just through my time on YouTube that people have said about this is that it is like 
just evens the skin tone very flawlessly and it makes you look really glowy and healthy and it's just for those days that you don't want full coverage and kind of want to let your skin breathe and so i do agree with all of those points now let me tell you the other side of this product which is the reasons that i included it in this video and so yes this is a very light weight product and it does have a very radiant finish and the thing is for me it's it makes me look greasy I have normal leaning oily skin and so maybe this looks nice like the moment I put it on but even 30 minutes or an hour later it, it just doesn't hold up on my face and so after like three hours this is completely off my face or if I touch my face it's just like sloughing off. I do have to powder considerably when I use this product and even then with that I find that the lasting power is not really great and the coverage of it is light coverage but it's more than I would have expected so that's actually a good thing about it so if you have a different skin type than me then you probably would love this um, it's just not like the look that I go for on the daily I would rather have kind of a more matte foundation and then my own oils will meld with it in the next couple of hours to make it look even better the longer I wear it I would want that over something that looks great when I put it on, but it only looks great for an hour. The third and fourth products, I actually don't have in my hands anymore because they were included in my declutter video, but these products are the Misha BB Cream, specifically in the shade number 21, and the Holika Holika BB Cream in the shade one, like the lightest one. And I don't have those in my hands because I already decluttered them, but the reason why I'll first talk about the Misha BB Cream, I didn't like it is because the texture was actually very similar to this, like the unpleasant thickness of the texture. So that's one thing. And then another thing was that the color was very gray. And I have very yellow skin. And it just didn't work. I'm not gonna talk about these two products for a long time because I already talked about it in my declutter. So that's the Misha BB Cream for the Holika Holika BB Cream. That one I had really high hopes for because Christina Chang, she's another one of my YouTube friends, I did a collab with her as well. She sold me on buying that product from Amazon and when I got it, firstly I got the wrong shade so that's in its, in its own its own issue but actually the thing that kind of made me huh like confused about it is because when I put it on it like felt really nice and hydrating and slippy but when I would look at my nose after putting it on my nose looked like the floor of the rocky dry floor of a desert and i don't have dry skin i already told y'all so i've never had a product do that to me before it was very uh jarring <laughs> and i even tried it with different primers it kept on doing that so i decluttered it i feel like i'm talking very fast in this video so i just shared my first four products which were all face products and the next product is one that i think is going to be the most shocking to be included in this video and i'll tell you why i included it it's not why you think and that product is the milk makeup matte bronzer in the shade baked and I love this product. It's the bronzer I'm wearing on my face. I think it looks flawless, seamless. It has a wonderful texture. It's the easiest cream bronzer that I've ever used to blend. It does smell like Play-Doh, which is a little bit strange, but it doesn't like mess with the experience of using it at all, at all. So I'm sure you're asking, why is this even in this video? I've never seen anyone say anything bad about this product. And you're right. The reason why this is included in my makeup regrets video is because I should not have bought this full-size product. I should have bought the mini. Anyone who talks about this says it has like a ridiculous amount of product that has 28 grams of product. And this full size item costs $28, which really $28 for a bronzer, especially a Sephora brand is not bad at all, especially because you get 28 grams of product. And so when I was finally decided to pull the trigger and buy this product, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is actually a really good deal. And there is a mini that Sephora offers and it is six grams for $15. And so in my head, I'm like, I would rather pay $28 for 28 grams, so it's $1 per gram, than pay $15 for just six grams, and it's two and a half dollars per gram. Hmm, what a mistake. I've never seen anyone in any panning community ever get close to finishing this. And I've seen Kelly Gooch say, she doesn't know how anyone can ever finish this. I've heard Samantha Ravendahl say, I don't know how anyone can ever finish this. And I'm another one who's saying that. From the very first time I used this product, because I'm a person who likes organization and numbers and spreadsheets and whatnot, I have been marking or tallying every single time I use this product. And so, so far I'm at 56 uses today and I have barely, I've done like scrolled it up maybe like this much in <laughs> the entire time I've used it. And I don't wanna put it up all the way, but I'm sure there's this much product left in here. It's ridiculous. This probably has over 400 uses in it easily. I'm not gonna use it 400 times before it goes bad because this is not the only bronzer I own. 
I would have told my past self, and I'm telling the current y'all selves that <laughs> you should buy the mini if you're considering this, because even though it seems like a really good value to be getting this big of a product and this much product for that price, you're not saving money by spending twice as much money for more product if you don't use all of the product. I would have been just as happy and I would have used this just as much if I had gotten the mini instead of buying the full size. So that is why the Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick is in this list of products. The next product I'm including is for a similar reason as the bronzer, and that is this. This is the Benefit Cabral Cream Gel, and this is a full size in the shade 5, which by the way is too dark for me. And it has a little bit of use in there, but not a lot. This is a lot of product, and it's drying out already, I can feel it. And the reason why I'm talking about this and how much product this has is because I know how hard it is to use up a mini. So this is a mini of the same product, and this is in the shade 4, which is actually my shade. And I also included this in my Project Pan 20 and 2020 project. And I've been working on this for two months now, and honestly, I don't see that much product or project pr progress. <laughs> I did not need to get this full size product. So just noting, just clarifying this bronzer and the brow pomade, these are under makeup regrets and not makeup disappointments because I do like these products a lot, but they were unnecessary full size purchases. You know what I'm saying. Now going forward, we're talking about eye products and lip products. Those are what's left. So the first eye product I'm talking about today is the Huda Beauty Rich Nude Palette. So here's what that palette looks like. Um, I had a little bit of a casualty with that shade, ignore that. <laughs> And the thing is about that shade, I'm not even sad I lost it. That tells you something. I adore, adore, adore the mattes in this palette. I really like Huda Beauty mattes. I think they are buildable, very easy to blend, very creamy, they're not dry. Um, the gripe that I have with this palette or what I was expecting differently from were the metallic shades. The texture of these metallics are different from what I was expecting from Huda Beauty palettes in particular because I have multiple Huda Beauty palettes, these nine pan ones, like I have the Smoky Obsessions, I have Mauve Obsessions, as well as the Nude Light and the Nude Rich, this one. The metallics in this palette are like very reflective. I'm actually wearing this palette on my eyes today and it looks really like pretty. I like the look, but the mm, these metallics are kind of dry feeling and they're more chunky and glittery and I can really feel the texture of those glitters. So here is um, a shade swatched from the Huda Nude Rich palette and this is the top middle shade here. You know, I really don't think you're going to be able to tell on camera, but there are like more there are little specks where it, it like flashes really bright and um, glittery and whatnot, and it's really pretty and it has a good effect, but uh. Next, let me swatch a metallic from my Smoky Obsessions palette. Here is that pink, and here is that top right shade. And I really hope you'll be able to see, otherwise I'm looking like a fool, but the formula for like the older palette is just so much more smooth and foiled and looks like actual metal as opposed to the newer one it has more glitter specks in it and sometimes i find that more glittery um, shimmer formulas are harder to control especially because when i put these on my eyes for any shimmer any metallic i pretty much use my fingers every time and it's not like particularly a bad thing if that's the effect you're going for, but all of the metallics in the Nude Rich palette are like that. And so if I don't want to do just a matte look from this palette, I have to be wanting that kind of shimmer, the kind of glittery shimmer, I mean. Also, here's a close-up of my makeup look. So you can see it's a really pretty look, but sometimes I want something a little bit more understated or something easier to control. The next eye product I'm talking about is actually a couple that I mentioned in my declutter. And these are some Stila Glitter and Glows, but it's specifically these shades or this like little range of Glitter and Glows. So this is in the shade Hypnotic and this is in the shade Mythical. Both of these are from the shade Mystery Line. The Hypnotic one has a black base and some flip to it, but the qualm I had with this is like, you put it on, looks really nice. How about, what if I want to build it up a little? And then you try to build it up, and then it kind of like gets patchy and takes away what was beneath it. And especially on the eyes when you're shearing it out, it is more exaggerated. And so after blending it out and even trying to build it up and fill in the spots, it just looks like a bad black eyeshadow that's patchy <laughs> with random specks of 
purple, red, gold through it. So because of the base of this product is why it was disappointing to me and pretty much unusable. The next shade has a similar problem, it just has a different base to it. So this is in the shade Mythical and so it has a white base with a like secret sneaky purple flip to it. And it has the same problem with just not being as um, consistent as I wanted it to be. So there's one swatch of the purple and it just looks like a random scattering of glitter to me. And then I try and build it up with the other side of this little paddle and it doesn't really get uh, more smooth. I'm gonna move my hand around a little bit more so you can see that patchiness that I'm talking about. And I know this is a glitter and glow. The purpose of it is not to have like a smooth metallic wash of color, but I, I think it could have been done a little bit better than this. The first one I want to compare it to is the Stila Glitter and Glow I have in the shade Fairy Tale. And this is the only glitter and glow that I kept through my declutter. Firstly, because I think the color is stunning, but also because the name is Fairy Tale and it's the name of an anime and manga that I grew up with. It was like a big part of my life for five years. So kind of for that factor too, I'm keeping this eyeshadow. But this is like their normal glitter and glow formula. Let me show you the difference. So here's Fairy Tale just swatched. And then now with a little bit of sharing out and blending out, it doesn't have the same thing happening with the patchiness and random distribution of glitters that these two have. So that's eight products so far. And I think I'm gonna share with y'all two more um, and one honorable mention that's not exactly within the realm of makeup, but interesting to us nonetheless. So the two more I'm mentioning is one eye product and one lip product. The eye product is shocking to anyone who watches me at all because y'all know I love ColourPop, but it's a ColourPop product. And that is the Jelly Much eyeshadow in the shade Whistlin' Pixie. And this is that shade, and it actually did exactly what I'm going to show you. I opened it up, and it literally, it literally fell out <laughs> because it's dry, as is dry. Um, I honestly can't remember it not being dry even when I first got it and it's okay if it's dry um, the texture was a little bit disappointing to me when I first used it because it wasn't like as jelly as I wanted it to be however it still works well um, this product is okay I still use it occasionally it's not the easiest to blend out once you put it on your skin but I think that the effect it has is still nice so here's a swatch of Whistlin Pixie and so there's that shade and it's really pretty I do like it but the disappointing part of it was a texture to me and I feel like after a couple months I'm just not gonna really be able to use it anymore so that's sad it's a good thing I only got one shade of that product instead of buying like five or six because I want to try just every color which I did I really wanted to try photosynthesis that shade it's like um, a dirty gold color so I'm glad I didn't get it though I can hear like rattling in there and you can't really control like the air seal on this like I close it really tight but it still happens okay now that my hands are covered in glitter let's move on to my last product and that is another very very hyped product not just on YouTube but I have also previously spoken very highly about this product and it is the Ofra long-lasting liquid lipstick and the inclusion of this product is only applying to this shade and so this is in the shade manila it was included in samantha march's collab lipstick set when she collabed with ofra and i bought it immediately because i love her and i wanted to do lip swatches and just show everyone what it's like if they were considering getting it themselves and i own four total shades of this lipstick i have manila Pasadena, Las Olas, which were the three that were in Samantha March's collab, as well as Miami Fever, which I got in a boxy charm. And when I first got Manila and saw swatches of it, I was a little bit nervous because I thought it would be too neutral gray on me. And when I tried it on in my swatch video, it was actually surprising to me. I didn't dislike it. However, using it more, I kind of dislike it. <laughs> I was right. It is too gray for me. And I'm going to swatch it, but I don't think it's gonna show up really well on camera. The swatch looks super pretty, and it's actually what I'm wearing on my lips today, but I have trouble every time I try to use this, which is why I don't reach for it a lot anymore. So when I put it on my lips, actually, let me show you. That way y'all can see what I'm talking about instead of just taking my word for it. This shade is kind of too neutral for me. I have very warm skin, but even my lips are pretty pigmented, and it's almost a little bit too light. So. My qualm is that when I put it on, it doesn't 
usually when I put on lipstick, I can just kind of put on a little bit top and bottom and go like, mm, and then it's like perfect. <laughs> but I can't do it with this one. So this is my natural lip color. And here it is when I put on Manila. Even though I try to pull it into my inner lip, it doesn't really stay there. And you see the line between my natural pink lips and this liquid lipstick color. And so just when my mouth is in a neutral position, <laughs> you can see that line. So what I need to do is go in and like very intentionally paint the inner part of my lip. So that's what I need to do every time I use this. And when it dries down, it turns a little bit more gray on me and it's a lot of times I'd just rather use a different lipstick than this. The Ofra liquid lipstick formula is pretty good and it usually doesn't feel dry on me, but this one in particular when I wear it because I have to work so hard with it and I a lot of times have to rub it in with my finger to make it even and not patchy, it, it gets dry on me. So it's just not the most pleasant experience to use. That's gonna dry on my lips now. So those are the two things I said I would mention. I have another short one. It's the Buxom Lip Glosses. I like really don't get why so many people love this so much. Andrea Matalano loves it. Uh, Samantha Ravendahl loves it. A lot of people do, but it's just so like thick and sticky. Um, and the thickness like stays. So it's good for being long lasting, but I don't like it. Now, the honorable mention to this video that I said I would include, that's not a makeup video or makeup item, are perfumes. And there are two very specific scents of perfumes that are very popular and I did not like at all. A couple of scents that I've gotten from Scentbird are Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, which is super hype. Um, and then the next one is Michael Kors Michael. And this one had like 4.7 stars and hundreds of reviews on the Sephora site. So the Juliet has a gun, not a perfume. The scent of it, it's the note is Ambroxan. There's a couple other names for that same note, but it's just one note. And that note smells like, um, not exactly peppery, but it's what I imagine taking a rock from my front yard and grinding it and then smelling the rock grinds would smell like. And every perfume changes with the natural chemistry of the person's skin who's wearing it. Uh, but it just kept on smelling like rock to me. Yeah, not my favorite if I'm putting on the effort of wearing a perfume. Uh, yeah, not that one. And the next one, Michael Kors Michael. I didn't even remember what the notes of this was supposed to be when I first put it on, but my gut over reaction to spraying it was like... <laughs> so the main note of this is tuberose. It has a few others. Um, I can't remember them, but I'll put them in my description box if I remember. And this one just smelled bad to me. And so I've been continuing to try to use this to make it work for me, just really like doing the thing. Instead of spraying it straight on me, I will spray it and then walk through it so I have just a hint of that smell. But the thing is, like, when I first smelled this and I immediately didn't like it, I feel like people around me will also have the same kind of reaction. So I kind of just stopped wearing this one as well. Okay, well, those are all the products. I mentioned 11, I guess, plus the perfumes. So, run through of the products again and what they were. First, I had the It Cosmetics CC Cream Matte. Secondly, I had the ColourPop Tinted Moisturizer. Thirdly, I had the Misha BB Cream in the number 21. Third, fourth, I had the Holika Holika BB Cream in the shade 01. Fifth product was the Full Size Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the shade Baked. Sixth was the Full Size Benefit Cabral Cream in the shade 05. Seventh was the Huda Nude Rich Palette just because of the formula of the metallics. Fourth, eighth, what? <laughs> eighth was the Stila Mystere Glitter and Glow shades in the shades Hypnotic and Mythical. And ninth was ColourPop Jelly Much Eyeshadow in the shade Whistlin' Pixie. Tenth was the Ofra Liquid Lipstick in the shade Manila, and eleventh was the Buxom Lip Glosses, and then my honorable mention, number twelve, were a couple of scents, including Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, and Michael Kors Michael. Those are all of my makeup regrets, purchases that I kind of wish I didn't make. I could have used that money on something I would, probably would have liked better, but that is the cost of consumerism and loving makeup. Sometimes you're going to get makeup you don't like. I hope y'all had fun, and I feel like I likely attacked at least one item that you love in your own collection. This video was so much fun to plan because I didn't want to just include random makeup that no one really expected to be good, so it's no surprise that they were not what I expected, but to intentionally choose items that I had high hopes for and fell short. 
or just that I could have purchased them a little bit more wisely in terms of getting minis instead of full sizes. So be sure to check out Steph's video on this topic too. And I can't wait to see what her picks are. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I need to tell you at the end of all my videos that y'all are my treasure. And remember to find beauty in every day. And most importantly, be kind to yourself. I'll see you in my next videos. Bye.